tiger, I will fix your teeth. You will crunch that crackling like a thunder egg crusher, without the tiniest ding to mar your grin. Tiger, I will soothe your voice, make it a velvety ringtone, pinging head voice on an E vowel, alighting easily across the tenderest notes. Tiger, I will have your back. As you confront authorities and domestic disturbances, burdening them with the desiderata of your best life. Tiger, I will be here when you get here. No matter how late the bus runs, I will be waiting in my underwear, and you will not rest your head unloved. Out of print with Ryan Tracy, the YouTube channel in which I read to you my original poems that I have written over and over and over the years and years and years. Today, I am treating you to the new era in the Out of Print. I've gotten some technology to help me give you, the viewer, a more engaged and exciting and unexpected experience. Today I'm reading you poetry inspired by daddies. For those of you not in the know, uh, <laughs> a daddy is, you know, a daddy is not a specific person. Well, yes, there are specific daddies in the world. Um, a daddy is a figure. A daddy is a figure of desire. A daddy is uh, an image, uh, not even an image. It can be an image. It can, a daddy can just be a sense, an impulse, a pulsion, a torsion, a feeling of just getting pulled along in the wake of desire. I would not be the first poet uh, to write or dedicate poetry to daddies. Um, and I also don't wish to over-celebrate this figure either, because, you know, uh, as um, what is clearly a masculine figure uh, that is older in its, uh, in its imaginary status, it's caught up in patriarchy and uh, male supremacy and probably white supremacy and all of these power structures. But it has a complicated history and it's complex and it's complicated and I think it's okay for people, if I need to justify my love, I think it's okay for people to indulge their daddy fantasies and to get to know them and to get to know their daddies and where the daddy issues came from and why they have them and where they're going and what you can do with them. But in all seriousness, um, these poems that, the poem that you heard and saw and watched, and by the way, if you like the new format and you like the experimental dance and interpretive dance, experimental dance, ex experimental cinema, and interpretive dance opening to, new opening to this show, uh, please um, leave comments and let me know. I really want to know what you think. I want to know uh, if uh, you like uh, to see the visuals along with poetry, if you like both or whatever, just let me know. Um, I'm open to feedback. <clears throat> The poem you first heard and the poem that I'm about to read are not necessarily me sitting down thinking about a daddy, a person, and writing um, an ode to daddy. The first time I wrote one of these poems, uh, which if you are familiar with poetry or familiar with analyzing poetry or the techniques and strategies of analyzing poetry, you might have noticed that uh, the voice of the poem is in the first person. Uh, so uh, the daddy is the 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 voice that the the poem expresses, um, or uh, through which the poem is being expressed. I mean, anytime you break down who's doing what and what's happening in poetry, it's just all going to fall apart. But 
what the poem tries to convey is the voice of the daddy speaking to the poet. That is a crazy conundrum. So the first time I wrote one of these poems, I was on a bus actually, and I wasn't having a very great day. Uh, it was, for whatever reason, I was stressed, I was doubtful about the future, I felt really terrible about uh, maybe myself, maybe the world, uh, maybe the people around me, um, and that everything I just said feels very familiar <laughs> right now. Uh, so if you're feeling despair, if you're feeling um, uh, hopeless, then perhaps these are the poems for you. So I was on a bus and I just wasn't feeling very good about the world and I just had this moment where I was like, I just, if if there was like a book of poetry on the seat next to me and I just picked it up and opened it, what would I want it to say? What would I want to hear? What would make me feel good, loved, safe, uh, comforted? Um, what would ease all of my worries and troubles? And this next poem is what came out. I don't need to psychoanalyze myself in front of you. You can do that on your own time. This is, I guess, in a certain way, my reparative, uh, poetic, uh, engagement with the figure of the daddy as not just a patriarch and, uh, you know, as Gertrude Stein succinctly uh, summarizes uh, the problem with patriarchy is that the world is too obsessed with fathers. And she says this in everybody's autobiography and other places in her work, uh, fathers and the father and fathers plural uh, for Gertrude Stein is like a problem. Insofar as uh, our societies become obsessed with this figure of this dominant and domineering father uh, that gives us some kind of sense of security. What I hope these poems are expressing is a slightly different uh, intonation of the father figure or the daddy uh, in, you know, um, gay or queer parlance, in which the I say in which a lot, by the way, in which we trust, in witches we trust, in which the daddy is actually saying loving and comforting things and not just being an authoritarian and ordering you around. So that is the impetus behind these poems. And I hope it is conveyed. I, when I read them, it is conveyed to me and I feel it. I feel the love uh, of the daddy, uh, which is also a real thing. I mean, the difference between the fantasy and the person and the, and the situation and the scene as uh, <laughs> it used to be called uh, in the S&M and leather worlds. The difference between the, the image, the poetic image and the relationship with that image and then the relationship with the person, it's very complicated. So I'm totally happy and confident in putting a this reparative poetics of the daddy, toward the daddy, with the daddy, from the daddy, onto the page and out into the world. So imagine me or you or someone you know um, uh, in one of the worst uh, and most depressive moments of their life, uh, just wanting, have, having their heart reach out uh, for solace and comfort uh, and recognition and support um, and the voice of the daddy comes through in that moment. So the next poem I'm going to read you is called Spotter and for those of you who might not know a spotter is the person in the gym who helps you as you do very serious free weights, bench presses, and other kinds of exercises. So your spotter is someone who uh, is explicitly um, meant to help you and assist you and help you get stronger and um, is a support for you in your life, in your world, in your gym practice, in your desires to grow and uh, become and flourish as a person. So I hope you can hear the voice of the daddy come through to help you when you need an assist. I will carry you to the gym. I will encourage your sweat and strain. I will urge you toward one more rep. 
I will straddle your head and lightly touch the underside of the nickel and steel and let you do the work. I will let you take breaks. I will push you because you can be pushed. I will pat you on the head and tussle your hair in my palm. I won't shout. I will be proud of you and walk with you into the showers. Well, there you have it. Uh, those are two poems about daddies for you. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, please like this video. Please leave comments so we can start a conversation about what you did and didn't like, if you loved it, if you hated it, if you love me or hate me. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know uh, what I can do to make uh, the experience of poetry on YouTube more engaging, more exciting, uh, more serious, more sensual, whatever you want. Uh, you know, this is about me, but it's also for you. I hope you have appreciated the lengths that I have gone through to up my technology game. Um, this is fun for me. I started this seven weeks ago in response to the coronavirus quarantine, um, and I'm having a good time uh, reading my poetry, thinking about you, thinking about how language can be used to change the world. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!